प्रणाम आचार्य जी माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज अबाउट मिसकनसेप्शन सो ऑफन सोसाइटी वी सी दैट देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ मिसकनसेप्शन ऑन रिलीजन सो सी वी वॉन्ट टू बी टूगेदर एंड सिंस द टाइम इज लिमिटेड वी वॉन्ट इट टू बी क्वाइट जॉयफुल राइट सो कम अप विथ वॉट एवर रियली मैटर्स टू यू और राइट यू डोंट रियली नीड टू कीप अप टू अ स्टैंडर्ड यू नीड टू कम फ्रॉम वे आर यू आर ओके एंड ओनली देन वील हैव समथिंग दैट keeps us spirited here right hmm. all right so we see a lot of misconception misconception in society on religion and uh, there is a lot of stupidity that goes on we are taught so many things in the name of fear and we just accept it like right now i'll give an example on uh, festivals we don't care about what the actual meaning of the festival all it is to youngsters is about planning this ki holi pe bahar jayenge and even when you talked about vibrations so i was having a conversation in which i heard ki uh, if you go out during the solar eclipse there are negative energies negative vibrations and i was like ki what negative vibrations transverse vibrations what what is that scientific term are you talking about so there are so many misconceptions there is so many stupidity in in the society that goes on and sometimes i hear about stories where it re- results in violence and uh, i am disturbed by that so i wanted to ask ki how do we avoid all that i think the first step has to be to make science compulsory till class 12th i really cringe when i hear somebody talking of positive negative vibrations and positive negative energies and such things The thing is that this fellow didn't take physics seriously even till class tenth. Otherwise, how can you talk of negative vibrations? What exactly does that mean? And from that comes the word vibes. Everybody is talking of vibrations continuously. This fellow came in, and the moment he entered the room, I experienced negative vibrations. What kind? What, what do you mean by that? Negative vibrations. If there are vibrations. let there be an instrument to capture them record them and tell me the intensity there has to be a wave form i want to see that wave form on paper and then i want to accord an equation to it put vibrations but there is an entire cult huge cult of vibrations what what's going on what's going on the problem is illiteracy at both levels scientific and spiritual we do not know science and we do not know spirituality so anything goes but we have heard of these terms because they have become common place the blessing of science is that it has given even the scientifically illiterate people the fruits of technology you might not know science at all yet the fruits of technology like the mobile phone are easily accessible to you in fact you might be someone who is contemptuous towards science so many people are aren't they for example somebody would say oh covid is just a hoax the virus does not exist at all even if you display to him the entire structure of the virus this is the virus he'll say no it does not exist even this kind of a person will be happily roaming about with a mobile phone if you have so much contempt towards science why are you using the products of technology why are you using the products of technology so that's the thing you see i keep emphasizing wherever i go including in campuses when i came here i just said please keep inner education compulsory have one course per semester or at least every odd semester otherwise in spite of being scientifically literate the fellow might still turn up superstitious and that's possible i have seen eminent scientists deeply superstitious not just in isro but even in other agencies nasa very eminent scientist often of the status of a director 
and the fellow is still superstitious. Why? Because he did not have inner education. You require both in tandem. You require science and you require spirituality. You require the outer education that Vedanta calls as avidya and you require the inner education that Vedanta calls as vidya. If you lack in either of them, then you will be just roaming around in ignorance of all kinds. Of these two, obviously, the inner ignorance is uh, more fatal. Sir, uh, even not only misconceptions about science, but also misconceptions about uh, religious concepts and spirit. That's true. That is very true. See, we just believe. The fundamental attitude is of belief, not inquiry. We don't want to know. We just want to take in anything. That's inner laziness, no? Spirituality you call that as a tamsa. You just want to take in anything and you don't want to go into it. The spirit of exploration, inquiry, investigation is not there. It's not a part of our culture as such. It's not a part of most of the cultures. Even in the West, it is not really very prominent. So when it comes to science, we believe in anything. And when it comes to spirituality, there also we believe in anything. We do not know a thing about the objective world. We also do not know a thing about our religions. So we do not know why festivals exist. There might be a very important reason why the institution of a festival has been wisely constructed. But that reason is lost on us. We have no idea at all. We just celebrate. So Diwali is just about crackers and lights and sweets and gifts and, and such things. What actually does Diwali stand for? Very few people know. When you do not know, how can you celebrate Diwali in its true spirit? The spirit is also gone. Any festival. Hmm? You, you just had Bakrid and it has become to the vast majority of Muslims a day of slaughter. What is this? Are festivals about such things? Hmm? What is holy? The day when you throw balloons at all kinds of people, especially girls, that's holy. What are we doing? Christmas is all about consumerism, shopping. You go shop, that's Christmas. You shop right till the New Year Eve. These two are one. Just as we do not know what's going on in the universe, we also do not know what is going on within us. Hmm? So somebody comes up and says, Oh, you see, this particular pick has been taken by NASA on the Diwali night. Hmm? It's a pic showing the map of India on Diwali night. And it goes viral on WhatsApp. Everybody is sharing it. And India is resplendent in that pic, lightened up. And those lights are visible 6,000 kilometers up in the space. And we are so proud. We are so proud. See, NASA has sent us this pic. The entire India is illuminated. And you have pics of Ram Setu. See, NASA has again sent this pic. And Ram Setu is visible between India and Lanka. The level of scientific literacy is so low, we tend to believe in just about anything. We believe in anything in the world and we believe in anything in the inner world. So somebody tells you inside there are waves, positive vibrations, you'll believe it. Somebody tells you inside there is some kind of uh, uh, ruh or soul. And if you sleep with your mouth open, it's likely to escape. <laughs> so you better keep things locked and tight over here. And you'll believe it. Take it from me. There are 40 times more ridiculous kinds of beliefs circulating and people are damn serious about them. And I won't be amazed, unfortunately, if even a few in the audience here subscribe to those beliefs. Sir, uh, I think a major reason for all of this is our media and what we are shown. So I was, uh, talk, I was no, hearing about... There was no media a thousand years back. 
but you still thought that eclipses can mean evil to you. Was it the media's doing? No. Who did it then? You go to tribal societies and they are mired in superstition. Are they victims of media work? They don't have any access to media. Why are they still so terribly superstitious? Please tell me then where does it come from? Where does it come from? Where does it come from? The real culprit is so close to you, you can't put a finger on it. Where does it come from? Huh? <laughs> superstition existed then, superstition exists now. Superstition exists in illiterate people, superstition exists in, in PhDs and scientists. Where does then superstition really come from? Superstition exists in the field of religion. Superstition exists even in science. Superstition percolates every dimension of our being, our thought. Where does it come from? It comes from us. What do you mean by us? Our mind. We are because we are afraid deeper, of, deeper, 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 deeper. Yeah, you are close, deeper. Are no, no. Where does it come from? What do you mean by the mind? Our mind, our brain. It comes from this, the body. That's the way our bodies are. It comes from our tissues, our cells, our DNA. That's the way human beings genetically are. That's where superstition comes from. Biologically, we are not created to really know. We are created to believe. Knowing is dangerous for the biological self. Tell me why. Because a lot of things that please the biological self show up their real and ugly face when you know. So your prakritic nature, your biological nature is to not to know and just to believe. Knowing is dangerous. Knowing is dangerous. Have you experienced that? How dangerous knowledge can be? It can shatter your entire identity. Therefore, people prefer to live in ignorance. Even if the option to really know and understand and realize is available, they would rather not exercise that option. Once you know of your inner darkness, it is terrible and humiliating and also then it puts a responsibility on you. If you know there is a lot of dirt inside, then you have to become responsible to clean it up. Who wants to own that responsibility? Who wants to put in that effort? It is far more easier, comfortable to just let the dirt and the darkness remain and you can comfortably sleep. Are you getting it? So we are not designed to know. We are designed to remain ignorant and belief assists Ignorance. Just believe. Somebody has told you something. Trust. Believe. Do not know. Now you know why knowing requires so much effort, whereas believing comes so easy. Would you voluntarily want to do something that requires effort? Difficult. Right? What would happen? There, there's an option to go for something that's so easy. You can sleep and it still gets done. And then there is something that requires continuous work, diligence. How many people choose the latter option? That's the reason why knowledge is 
precious but difficult and wisdom is even rarer knowledge is about knowing this wisdom is about knowing this plus this hmm? so we have to be very cautious of ourselves a Our real enemy sits within here in the body itself in the dna itself we don't need external enemies we already have an in house one and you can't really get rid of it it will continue to sit next to you as long as you are embodied you see we are in a difficult position to be born is to be born in a difficult state to be born is to born along with an enemy the two of you are born together you and your enemy you are consciousness and the very old primitive tendencies are your enemy the body but these two have to coexist so they are tied together they are wedded together it's a difficult marriage that has to last the entire life a difficult marriage where the two are antagonists hmm spirituality you call consciousness as purush the body as prakriti the task of the purush is to be with prakriti and yet not get allured be with her and yet not allow her to dominate you so uh, following up a question to what you just answered let's get an example let's say i'm a 7 year old kid who goes to school and learns something that is non superstitious let's say my parents are superstitious and when i come back home they say what you learned at school was wrong and you have to learn this superstitious thing now according to me my parents are more important to me because they have given me birth and all those things so uh, while getting these two conflict ideas i may go to the wrong uh, idea because th- that person was important to me so how do you remove this factor of you know importance of people and just imp- getting into the importance of idea no you should utter the word i or me with great care because it's quite possible that something alien that you have absorbed within is speaking as i it is not really i it is not internal it is actually external alien but in your subconscious state in your sleep you just happened to take it in and now it has come in and is masquerading as hmm, pretending to be the i so when you say i believe that my parents are more what my parents say is more education is more important than what my teachers say that's not what you believe in that's what you have been taught to believe in so don't say it is my belief that parents word is more important even even this belief that parents are more important than let's say books is coming from the parents what else would they tell you <laughs> what else would they tell you so it's not your belief even the belief that parents are sacrosanct is a belief given to you by parents what else do you expect them to do so be very careful what is really your own that's not your own that's a cultural belief that's a familial thing and those cultural beliefs vary from land to land and time to time don't they the kind of importance you give to parents in india is very different from what you give to them in the us let's say hmm? the kind of importance you give to give to marriage is very difficult is very different from country to country even community to community hmm age to age then how can it be something internal to you it's a function of time culture society norms it's not yours and that's the freedom a young man should seek to not to be a victim of cultural norms of what goes around hmm and that is true religiosity that is true spirituality 
ट्रू स्पिरिचुअलिटी इज नॉट अबाउट बिलीव बिलीव आर बॉन्डेजेस ट्रू स्पिरिचुअलिटी इज अबाउट फ्रीडम फ्रीडम फ्रॉम ऑन बिलीव योर कमिटमेंट योर एलिजियंस हैज टू बी सोली टू द ट्रूथ नथिंग एल्स आई एम नॉट ओब्लाइज टू ऑनर एनी थिंग एक्सेप्ट द ट्रूथ यू गेट दिस यू आर नॉट ओब्लाइज रिड योर सेल्फ ऑफ ऑल अदर ऑब्लिगेशन एंड प्रोमिस नो यू आर नॉट ओब्लाइज your only responsibility your only commitment is towards the truth all else is dispensable all else can be given up if it's proven to be untrue including the things that you are taught to hold as sacred sacredness is not higher than truthfulness because only the truth is sacred if something that you hold as sacred is not the truth or truthful how exactly is it sacred in the first place only am i making sense convince me you are with me am i making sense all right only the truth is sacred what is sacred something that you unconditionally honor something that you never want to breach or violate or disrespect right that sacredness something that you take as beyond yourself something that you take as transcending yourself so you always bow down to it that sacredness only the truth is sacred no belief no relationship no experience nothing in life is sacred except the one and if you can see that and if you can practice that then you will experience a great freedom in life which actually is your birth right a birth right that is denied to most of us unfortunately you getting it hmm? so so like when we say that we are free to uh, believe what we want to believe no like from our side if we have to believe the truth and we can we have to we are not obliged to anything no 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 wait wait, wait. there is a problem here when you say you are free to want anything or believe in anything that's not freedom at all freedom does not rush after wants or desires or beliefs they are all one they come from your darkness freedom questions everything because freedom wants to accept only the real freedom has a great distaste for fakeness do you want or like fake stuff how many of you huh to not to like fakeness is freedom what if your desires themselves are fake what is fake that which is second handed somebody installs a desire inside you why do you want to call it your desire please tell me please tell me a clever marketer comes here for example and in some cunning way starts advertising let's say a new mobile phone to you without even explicitly saying that he is here to advertise and because he is advertising his stuff you develop a desire for it that's what advertising does does it not what happens when you watch an ad you become desirous and then you call that desire as your desire how is it your desire please tell me so how is it freedom then to rush after an imported desire somebody has installed a desire in you and now you are investing your time and energy and life in fulfilling that desire is that a wise thing to do so that's not freedom that's bondage freedom is not about doing what you want to do as young people please get that right out of your mind because that's the popular notion of freedom young people love to have i'm free to do whatever i want to do if you are free to do whatever you want to do then you are a terrible slave not a free man because all desires all desires remember this are external impositions that 
you take in in your ignorance, you do not realize they are external things. Desires come either from your body or from your sensual experience or a combination of the two. Are you getting it? Food, for example. The fundamental urge arises from the body. But you might not be according it much weightage. And then somebody brings a platter of something delicious in front of you and there is the tempting aroma. And what do you find? You find desire arising with all its force. The two have combined. The basic urge was bodily. The body was saying, I am hungry. And then there was an external stimulus, the sight and the smell. And the result was deep desire. That's the anatomy of desire. That's how it arises. Now, do you want to really call it your own? And food is a fundamental bodily thing. So it's all right if you have that desire. Think of the several other things. Hmm? I said desire makes you a terrible slave. Why? Because everybody knows how to excite you. If, uh, if you have some money in your pocket and if I come and snatch it, I would be called a thief and a robber. You would launch an FIR, right? What if I just tempt you and you give that money to me? Now the transaction is legal and acceptable, but the same thing has happened. The robber has just grown clever. No, instead of snatching it from you, he advertised something useless to you and you, you bought it and you gave the money. It's just robbery. And you are very happy that you have fulfilled your desire. No, it's not your desire you have fulfilled. If anything, it was probably the robber's desire you have fulfilled. Have you not? It's not your desire. Whenever desire arises, ask yourself, how is it mine? How really is it mine? It is either the body's thing or the senses thing. When you are in a state to discount these two kinds of desires, the bodily one and the external social one, then you will be faced with something very, very important. Once these two desires are discounted, then you are left with your deepest, pure, original desire. And the wise ones have told us that the purpose of life is to fulfill that one deepest desire, not the thousand shallow miscellaneous ones. If you spend your life fulfilling the various miscellaneous desires, that's just wastage of life. But beneath the thousand shallow desires, the real one deep desire remains hidden. You never come to know of it. When you don't come to know of it, there is no possibility of fulfilling it. First of all, keep the, keep the false desires aside so that you can see the real desire. And once you see the real desire, it's so fascinating to try to fulfill it. Hmm? That real desire is denoted by a better word. It's called love. It's no more a desire then, it's love. And then what you get is a life spent in love. Not love of the kind you watch on the screens. Real love. Not love of the kind that necessarily includes a person mostly of the other gender. No. Love of the real kind. Love that brings, brings life to life. Hmm? That's the kind of life you all deserve to live. But you'll, you'll squander the opportunity if you think that uh, you want to buy a t-shirt and that's what you want. Or you want to attend a rock concert and that's what you want. And all these are little things. Petty desires. You can't, you can't invest too much in them. Hmm? Sir, I want to know that how do we uh, explore what's inside of us? 
like in the starting of the session you said that what sees through our eyes or what listens through these ears so how do we explore what that is or if we google this out so there's so many religions they all have different methods of doing that so how do i know what's right for me start by discounting that's the way you will probably never come to know the perfect answer but i said that you should be grateful if you can discount the gross imperfections that's the way if you keep waiting for the perfect one or perfect thing or perfect answer you will keep waiting don't wait start by rejecting negating discounting have the heart to disown and be detached keep things aside the moment you honestly know that they are not what what you must value keep them aside is all this sounding very dry no it is not it is not it's just that we have been trained in the wrong kind of juices hmm? what i'm talking of is actually something very lively very exciting it's just that uh, you need to experiment a bit you need to try it out huh? and you need to hold on for a while there would be the initial resistance don't bow down to it stand firm for a while and then you will start seeing that that this way of living in true freedom is actually very enticing and once you get the taste of it the hang of it you will forget all about the usual juvenile stuff you will laugh at it you will not look at it you will discard it this is so enticing hmm you will need to begin you will need to try things out he said two things one is body and other is consciousness body has a shape and we can feel it but what about consciousness how do you Of pure it. consciousness is formless attributeless nameless the senses cannot perceive it the mind cannot think of it but our consciousness definitely has a shape for example if you are body identified then your consciousness has the shape of the body if i am greatly enamored by this mug then my consciousness takes almost the shape of this mug i become this no have you seen when you are very fascinated by something you lose sense of everything else and your entire mind is focused on that one thing itself so consciousness as we have it is an adulterated thing hmm? and is uh, intertwined with one object or the other but pure consciousness no shape nothing and that's what its purity is all about to be free of everything that has shape and form and name that's why it is called pure pure of pure of shapes norms yes mm-hmm.